Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and get ready for a day-long adventure, and we are starting our day early. It's not early for you. It's a normal day here. We're at Madison Middle School in North Hollywood, and you're most welcome. And you are the principal. I am the principal for the last 14 years. Now, we are standing here looking at the kids coming into class. That's class right. starts in about four minutes. That's correct, and if we don't move out of here fairly soon, we'll have our tardy lineup here. So if you don't want to get detention, you probably ought to move what on. What do you mean the tardy lineup? <laughs> when young people regrettably arrive a few minutes late, instead of scurrying them late to class, we line them up here, scan their ID cards, and assign them detention. Oh for my me. gosh. Well, you know, we run a tight ship here. Well, I gotta <laughs> tell you, we're not tardy today. If you had uh, been my principal a few years ago, <laughs> unfortunately, I might be in that line well, from time to time. Just me, just help guide the young people. Now, is that the tardy bell? That's the tardy bell, so uh -oh. fairly soon and the table will come out. You can see they're going a little faster now. <laughs> okay, now as okay. much fun as we're going to have in your school today, and a fine looking school it is. Indeed it is. You know, we're not here to go to class in one of your buildings. No, no I understand you're here for something actually more exciting than that. Very exciting mm -hmm. and something that's very popular with the students. This is a program we've had for about two weeks here and our sixth graders are thrilled with it. They enjoy every minute of it and I think you will too. Boy, that's a pretty good build up. <laughs> We're going to spend the morning here at Madison Middle School in North Hollywood, not in the building, but we're still going to be going to class. We're, we're going to be in a temporary mobile building. Now don't give it away. Very special place. Don't I'll let give you, it away. I won't. I won't. Get busy and get these detention. <laughs> get these kids in detention here. You have a wonderful day, Mr. Thank Hauser. you very we'll much. You and your name again? Joanna Kunis. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Madison. And now we're off to our special classroom here at Madison. Okay, the adventure begins. I'm with Miss Smith, who's one of the coordinators here at Madison Middle School, and this is Mrs. Chung's class. Sixth grade history class. Sixth grade class, and here we go. We're going into this wonderful classroom, and it looks a little different from your average classroom. Yeah, yes, it does. This is the Maya Mobile from the LA County Museum of Art, and it's a very exciting program. It's an educational outreach program that all of our sixth graders are participating in. Okay, go on inside and have a good time. And here's the guy right here, How you doing? Nice to who's meet you. here to welcome us. Miss Smith gave away a little bit of it. It's mm -hmm. called the Mayan Mobile. Yeah, it's the Mayan Mobile. Um, I've been with the program for almost three years, and we've been going throughout all over uh, different LA, LA County schools, and we have this wonderful education program that teaches children not just about Maya art, but about Maya culture. So this is like a, a, a classroom on wheels. Definitely this big is. truck just drives up onto a paved area like this and parks for a couple of weeks, and. It basically stays out here for for almost about a month, depending on the size of the sixth grade class. We could be here for a month to a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes up early in the morning before all the kids are here. We set up the steps and uh, away we go, you know? Well, now it's gotta be exciting for them oh, to do something a little out of the ordinary, going into a big old trailer truck like this to class. Oh, you will, once you go inside, you'll see that it, it puts the children in a different environment and it's a different setting than in their regular everyday classroom. It's completely redesigned designed from the inside it's not your average truck it, it, it's it has the feel of a, the feel of a Maya site so, so from the outside I mean it's attractive you've got this artwork this Mayan artwork outside mm -hmm. but it's as with most classrooms it's yeah. what's inside yes. that counts yes and and once you go inside you'll, you'll see the difference the outside has uh, examples of Maya ceramics so some of the artwork that the Maya produced in their their classic period Right, and it's very beautiful. We we emphasize a lot on on particularly the writing system, as you'll see inside as well. well let's go inside. Enough of this. Right. Yeah. We're inside the classroom, and Eduardo, yeah. you were right. This is this has a whole wonderful feel to it. Yeah, actually, um, what it. If you really stop and take a really good look, um, we're kind of on, in the inside of a Maya temple. Right? You can see the, 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 the stone walls, 
and it has a, a, a second feel of an archaeological site. Ah, with that's the lights. what this is. Yeah, with the tents and the lights and, and the workstations. So the kids are, are working with clay, which is the material that the ancient Maya uh, used, but they're working specifically with um, the writing system. And so as you'll see in a while, you'll see that each, each student is, is choosing out a hieroglyphic symbol from, from the Maya writing system and transferring it onto a clay tile and painting it. Is this the art teacher down this here? is our art teacher, right? Howdy, Huel Hauser. Oh, Ugo Hopping. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Tell us exactly what's going on right here with the kids and the tiles and the paint. Um, what, what's happening is that they are making an art project that's based on uh, a hieroglyphic from basically the Mayan civilization. And uh, what we're doing is teaching them here language uh, through, uh, through art. And, and at the same time, we're teaching them how to appreciate art through making an actual object. So they are actually getting what? A, a blank tile. Uh -huh. Let's see, can I pick up your tile for a minute? They just get a blank piece of tile. I'm sure, yeah. And then they look at well, what? We prepare these? At one of these codices here for them. Uh -huh. And what they do is basically they translate modern day symbols uh, that they see e every day on their way home or basically in different, in different parts of, of the city. And then we translate, we've translated for them these symbols into um, what their representations are in Mayan hieroglyphic writing. Ah. And what we do is uh, we basically uh, are letting them do the hieroglyphic and then draw that onto the clay tile. And then uh, we give them glazing paints so they could basically paint that. And then we take them to the museum and we fire them in a kiln and they get them back in about a week's time. Can we, you had an example here, didn't sure. you, of what one of them... Well, um, basically, uh, this Look is, at this, uh, Cameron, this is very interesting. This is how they're, an example of a sixth grade project where they have actually glazed the tile mm -hmm. and they've done their hieroglyph. Uh -huh. And then uh, the same young artist that did that uh, went on to uh, basically get it glazed Oh, and this, this is, is what it looks like after, after it comes back from being glazed. Exactly. So each one of the students get a final glazed Mayan tile yeah. to keep. Absolutely. And, and, you know, different schools that we've gone to have done some really interesting projects with them. I mean, sometimes we the, the school coordinates it, and, and uh, they actually make a mural with these. Oh, and they've, they've put them up on the wall. And you, you have, you know, over 300 tiles done by these students, which is quite an amazing And the kids thing. must love this. I mean, look back here. They're having a... What are you drawing back here? Uh, this is for the um, uh, flower. This is a translation for the flower. Look, here's the flower right here. I'm not sure. Is that, is that a flower? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is the Mayan symbol for flower. And you've got it there on your tile. And you're doing a... Sun. It's a translation for the sun. Look at this. This is the Mayan symbol for sun. Very, very interesting. You've got a... The man? A man. <laughs> These are kind of strange symbols, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know what they were. And yours is... The fish. The fish. This is the one that we all recognize right here. Now they're starting to paint. Yeah, um, after they finish drawing their tile, they, they can uh, go ahead and, and reach for some glaze paint and they start, to, they start to apply it onto their tiles. Now, this arts part of the program, where they actually do the tiles, this is just a small part of it. Oh. There, there's history, there's all kinds of lectures mm -hmm. and slideshows and films and all sorts of things. Well, actually, we, we show them a film we give them their history class in here. They're excused from their regular history class, but we become their history teacher. We give them a history class dealing with one specific ancient civilization, the Maya civilization. Now, is this something that sixth graders do statewide? Is this part of the curriculum? N Maya culture doesn't really hit the sixth grade. It, it goes into the seventh grade curriculum, but they are dealing with ancient civilizations. Ah. And so another aspect of this program is a, a tour that they a field trip to the museum where they get a, a, a guided tour and they see not only the Maya civilization but they get to see Greek and ancient China and Rome all the and so, ancient civilization all the ancient civilization so they'll be actually visiting the Los Angeles County Museum of Art oh, yeah. after this, after this yes. that's the tie-in between mm -hmm. this 
and the County Museum of Art. Yes, yes. No, that's and one this of the is part of the, I mean, this is all underwritten by LACMA? Yeah, this is all part of the part of the LA County Museum of Art, and it's funded by the Gluck Foundation. Wow, Isn't what really? a great idea! Yeah, it's fascinating. It's 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 a neat it's a neat project, and it's a it's a great way to, to teach children through a mobile classroom. Well, and what role do you think the fact that it's a mobile classroom that it's different from the classroom they're used to being in every day? Does that add a sense of excitement to it that wouldn't normally be here? It, it, it I think it does add a, a really Really fascinating sense of excitement. I, they really are pulled out of their their normal environment, and they feel like they're in a different world. Sometimes they actually they they, they don't want to leave. They want to stay inside, and, and they they it puts them in the, the imagination of being in, inside a Maya environment, inside well, yeah, a Maya you temple. You feel like you're in a Mayan temple. Yeah. So, this is great. Yeah. Well, we have two visitors from LACMA. This is your program. Yes. Does this program get an A? Absolutely, definitely an A plus program. Why did it? How did it come about? How did something like this come into the minds of the people at a county museum of art? Well, actually, the donor came to us, the Maxwell H. Gluck Foundation, and told us that they'd like to fund a truck and what kind of a program would we like to do. So we came up with this idea to complement our collection of Maya art. We wanted a stimulating art experience for the students on the truck, and we wanted to give them an opportunity to come to the museum to see the actual objects. So it all ties together. Yes, so we developed the entire program around that one idea of having a truck. And yeah. as the lady who helps coordinate all this with all the schools, are there more schools wanting this than time for the truck to be there? Definitely. The schools are so large that it will be in one school, usually longer than a month's time. So how do you decide who's going to get the truck and who isn't? It's based on the months that the school has chosen, the number of students that are in the school, and what best facilitates the school calendar. Now you've got film and slides going on down in this end of the trailer, mm -hmm. and then you've got all of this wonderful, this looks like very old vintage equipment here. Uh, what we tried to recreate is a, is a feel of the early archaeological sites that first went into the, 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 Maya, the Maya ruins, and so this has that 1940s archaeological equipment. and. It, it's functioning because it it, it has a, a look to it, but the what buttons. What does it do? Well, that's 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 exactly <laughs> it. The buttons uh, control the lights, the sound, oh. and so we we create we create different effects with with uh, with with all the switches and basically control the video and, and all the other equipment. To the oh, track. you've got yeah. bird sounds and it's the jungle sound. Yeah, it's the sound of a jungle. Yeah. Oh, that's great! Which is the environment that the Maya temples are in. What so. other sounds do you well, have? That's pretty much what's running with the with uh, oh, I with, got the, you. with the images. So yeah. they get the images, they get the sounds, mm -hmm. and then they get the the tactile exactly. touching mm -hmm. and looking and feeling. Mm -hmm. That's definitely it. Now, is this your specialty? Well, um, my my field of study is in uh, Mesoamerican studies and the Maya and Central Mexico. So uh, this is right up my alley. This is definitely what I like to talk about, and this is what I'm studying in school. I'm a graduate student, and 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 this is what I like to apply. This is made to order for you. Yeah, you I must <laughs> love this. Yeah, I, I'm pretty. I feel pretty fortunate to be part of this program. I I, I landed in a really nice spot. So you're doing something good and and you're also turning kids on that's that's the biggest reward the reward is that I, out of all the children i see there's always a group of kids that that are really excited about this learning something new about anthropology archaeology and about ancient civilizations and it, and it really gets them going they come they come looking for me and they want to they want me to show them more and they want they they ask for books and that that kind of stuff just really makes my day it really adds purpose to my life there's art everywhere, and this fits in perfectly with what you're all about. Well, I'm an artist. Um, I'm up at Cal Arts in Valencia, um, attending the studio program there for fine arts. And how did something like this come your way? Well, uh, I've been working on this program about just about four years, and uh, I have been working a uh, art instructor throughout Los Angeles, and I have worked for different institutions. And uh, when I came into this program, it was a really neat experience because it just allowed to be able to work with the kids 
in, um, in, in greater numbers. Because, you know, sometimes we do about uh, close to 5,000 kids in one year. You're kidding. No, absolutely. We, covering seven to 10 schools, those are large student bodies. So, you know, by the end of the year, we have seen uh, a large number You've of You've made a lot of tiles. We've made a lot of tiles. Definitely. And listened to a lot of bird songs. Yeah, Boy, these oh, birds yeah. began to get on your nerves after Absolutely. a while. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, that's okay. You can leave it up, but it's, right. it kind of permeates the air, doesn't it? It does. And in, you, what, <laughs> one of the things that's great about, about them is that once they get the, the tile, in the end, it's all about the kids, you know. We get so many letters from teachers and from the kids themselves who are just so amazed that they're actually able to do something like this. We have a little innovation going on here. Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay, can I, can I see yours? It, um, well, for example, here, what you have um, is uh, not only did they begin making the hieroglyph as we initially gave them the guidelines, but then they start going uh, and making with their own creative talent. She added all the dots. All the dots and actually making this really interesting um, hieroglyph in her own way. And uh, actually, you know, this is such an amazing program in the sense that um, we have had actually um, Mayan speakers from uh, Central America and southern, the, the southern peninsula of Mexico from like Yucatan. And uh, they've been in our classes because they're immigrant children. And uh, Wait a minute, you have children in your classes speaking time, Mayan? From time to time, yeah. It's uh, on rare occasions. Um, you'll have a child they will speak to you like a, in a dialect like Cholan or your Yucatecan and uh, they'll actually they'll actually teach you how to pronounce the actual words better. <laughs> well, I thought Mayan, I thought the Mayan culture was a was an ancient culture that had vanished from the earth. Well, well, those are some of the myths that we're trying to dispel here in the truck by sharing with them the history of the Maya, is that it's not just a history, it, it's a contemporary culture. You know, tell that to the three million people in Central America. Who are know. direct descendants yeah, of the Maya. Who are direct descendants of the Maya, and the language beautifully exists. It's still spoken, and, and as we so saying. there is a Maya language? There's a variety of Maya languages. Um, there's is it like Spanish? Is it nothing like Spanish? It's a, it's an, it's a, it's a, it's an indigenous native language, uh, a part of the collection of the very native very very many Native Americans that we have in part of the Americas, and and there, there, there's a number of them. You know, there's. Well, I think most of us need to come to class here because <laughs> I thought it was one of those civilizations that had you know, like vanished, and we didn't know that much about it except from the ruins that exist in the middle of the jungles of Central America. Yeah, then they no, no more ancient temples and civilizations being built in that way, but the Maya are still out there, still cultivating the land, still speaking their language, still uh, living their culture and traditions uh, day to day, every day. Wow. And those are the kinds of things we like to share, how even the children themselves are are part of that culture just in the simple fact of them eating things like corn tortillas and tamales which go back 2000 years you know and those are contributions left to us by by the maya what else did the maya give us oh well uh, aside from that we have the now we're going to start his hour and a half lecture here <laughs> Well, uh, aside from the, the, the rich variety of food, uh, we have all the valuable ceramic that they left, uh, left us, which teach us a lot about their, their civilization. But um, they have, uh, we share with them a lot of beautiful things, like the ball games that they used to play. The children are into sports at, at their school. That's, that's, what, that's our favorite recess and lunchtime, you know, playing basketball. But like, did you know that the Maya played ball as well? They had a solid rubber ball that they used to bounce around. And, those kinds of things are just like, wow, I had no idea. You know? This was how many thousand years ago? You can go back 4,000 years with the Maya civilization, and, and they were doing this. You know, the, the invention of rubber comes from Mesoamerica, and most people don't know that, that you know, it's native to the Americas. Huel, actually, this, this wall right here is a really good example of, of the images on Maya ceramics. They weren't glazing the way the children are glazing now, but this you can see. Uh, the different colors are the slips that, that Ugo was talking to you about. Mm -hmm. And the slips are, are basically different color clay. It's, a, it's their deposits of different organic material that, that comes down to the ground and sort of changes that color of the sand and, and the clay. And the Maya go around collecting these different colors and applying them like paint. You get excited about this. You smile when you talk about it. And, 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 and that's great. That's what a teacher should do. What are the what, what are kids? gain from studying this ancient 
these ancient civilizations? Well, one of the most valuable things, the most valuable things for me is that I make a, a genuine connection with the children and, 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 and the cultural connection so that some of them can see um, their own roots and, and it's a, lot of, a lot of children in the LA area have some sort of descendantry or connection with the Maya or in Mesoamerica in general. But it also, even for all children, it, it adds a, another cultural perspective where they might not be getting in the sixth grade. And their, their curriculum is dealing with ancient civilizations, but this, this makes it very real for them. And it helps out the teachers and with their curriculum and they can find a really great connection to teach this stuff later on. And isn't it interesting that all of this is happening inside you're in kind of a little time capsule here with the sights and the sounds that take you back all of this is happening inside a trailer parked out on a schoolyard school yeah we're outside of a schoolyard there's basketball courts outside and but you know the children forget that you, you know being in here I even forget where I'm at you walk out and it's like whoa okay the back to the real world <laughs> you know but you're inside the Maya temple for the for now, you know. So it's really neat, and and the children really enjoy that. Did everybody get their uh, Did everybody get their uh, name written on the back of your tiles? Yes. Okay. Then what I want you to do is, uh, once you get a chance, I want you to pass all your pencils to the left corner of the table. Okay. If you think you're finished. You have to actually give me the tile. If you want, you can actually make this a little bit darker and go over your brush with it, and, and, and it'll be a thicker, a thicker part that you need to be a neat effect. You just want to take your brush and, and do that. Take one of these colors. This is the same color as that. Oh, okay, that's really nice. That's cool. You actually have to go back with a little bit of that yellow. That's really nice. No, that's I used to like that. That's good. If you want to add another thing, you can. You can probably put it here, but I mean, it looks really good. I mean, that is excellent. Look at this one. That is a beautiful. Did you get paint with your name? Yeah, I mean, what, what this does, it basically, it just gets it looking a little bit nice and tight, and then at the same time, then it, if you want to, you can even begin painting the sides of the tile. There they are. Give us a wave. Don't drop your tile, though. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.